Hey guys, what's happening? Niat here with Film Comics Explained, and as requested, today we'll be taking a look at the hunger virus featured throughout Marvel Comics. I've had numerous requests to cover this over the past year, and the reason it's taken me so long to make this is that I needed to go through all the comics in which the virus was featured to understand where it came from, and the way that it changed those that were infected by it. To be honest, the entire series, one-shots and crossovers do create a lot of inconsistencies, but for the sake of simplicity and clarity, I'm going to run through some of the main events in the comics that help us understand the entire sequence of events towards the end of this video. First seen in Ultimate Fantastic Four, issue number 21, the hunger virus is one of the most virulent pathogens present within the Marvel multiverse. While the precise origin of the infection is unknown, what we do know is that a temporal paradox is responsible for its existence in multiple universes, which I'll explain in more detail later on. The virus was transmitted via a bite from an infected individual, and once within the bloodstream of its host, it would turn its victims into zombies that would develop a hunger that could only be satiated by the ingestion of living flesh. I should also point out that unlike other zombies in popular culture, those that were infected retained their intelligence, personalities, and if they were superpowered, they would also keep most of their superhuman abilities, with the exception of healing factors and regenerative abilities, which would have all been spent in their attempts to fight the virus. While these zombies kept their former intelligence and personalities, they were all robbed of any semblance of self-control, and the more hungry they were, the less rational they would become. At the same time, once they'd feasted on the flesh of non-infected victims, their personalities would re-emerge and the more humane and moral individuals would often feel a significant amount of guilt moments after the hunger had temporarily subsided. The virus had a 100% infection rate, with everyone that was bitten by an infected individual soon transforming into a walking, talking, undead being. While characters like Spider-Man, Captain America and Wolverine all had an accelerated healing factor that staved off the virus for as long as it could, they would all inevitably succumb to its effects. Even gods like Thor and powerhouses like the Hulk would all be overwhelmed by the hunger virus. What I found most surprising when doing this research was that the contagion and the hunger it aroused seemed to function in a similar manner as addictive drugs, and while the changes to the body were physiological, the hunger was entirely mental, with infected hosts not needing the sustenance provided from eating living flesh. This addiction is exemplified by the numerous severed zombie heads still searching for food despite not having stomachs to process it, implying that, as some people can be addicted to drugs and alcohol, those infected with the hunger virus were addicted to the consumption of human flesh. Furthermore, like any addiction, the hunger could be cured if a victim was isolated from a food supply for an extended period of time, thereby enabling their cravings to disappear and allowing the infected to then perform a functioning role within society. Having said that, the physiological effects of them having necrotized flesh and near immortality were irreversible. The hunger virus was also sentient, with its will devoted towards driving those infected with it to consume the flesh of the living. Because it was aware that it would ultimately exhaust its food supply within any given universe, the disease specifically aimed to infect superhuman beings, as they were the most likely to either develop or discover a means of breaching the dimensional barrier, which in turn would spread the infection to other realities. In the Ultimate Fantastic Four crossover comics, Reed Richards of the Ultimate Universe receives contact from an older version of himself from an alternate dimension. After crossing over with the use of an interdimensional device the genius had built, Reed soon discovered that he'd been tricked and had arrived at an alternate Earth where all the superheroes had turned into zombies and had desired to use the ultimate Marvel Universe as a food source. After failing to capture him, the zombified Fantastic Four of this reality cross over to Earth-1610 through a dimensional portal but are soon captured. With the help of Magneto, Reed escapes the zombie universe and prevents more zombies from entering the ultimate universe. Through the means of an eternal time loop, Uwatu the Watcher of Earth-C sends a zombified sentry from this reality to infect Earth-2149 with the plague, and while his intentions aren't clear at the start, his actions make more sense towards the end. When the zombified sentry arrived, the Avengers were sent in to investigate, but were quickly infected and spread the virus to the other heroes. In less than 24 hours, all of the Earth had been infected, in part due to a zombified Quicksilver who traversed the world within minutes, biting humans, heroes and villains alike, who in turn went on a feeding rampage. The Silver Surfer then appeared and announced the coming of Galactus, but even he too was attacked and killed, enabling the infected heroes to absorb his cosmic powers. Sure enough, Galactus appeared to devour the world just as the Silver Surfer had said he would, but the zombies constructed a machine using Vibranium from Wakanda to unite their newfound cosmic powers and take down Galactus, who they then also ate. They were then able to use the immense powers of Galactus to travel to other worlds and eat other life forms. Soon after this, we discover that Tony Stark had created life-altering nanobots designed to fight cancer. And viewing the hunger virus as an abnormal infection on the human body, the nanobots began decomposing infected individuals. 
While Ant-Man had hoped to use the Watcher's multiversal technology to enter another universe by using the brains of the most intelligent people on Earth who are now zombies, as well as the power of the Sentry, the remaining heroes journeyed to his location and were able to use Stark's nanobots to defeat him and the remaining infected. But since the Sentry was in a contained tube, he'd remained unaffected by the nanobots. Uwatu the Watcher then appeared and having observed the entire run of events, he came up with what he believed to be a perfect solution, which was to send the Sentry to Earth 2149 of the past, preventing him from doing any further damage in the present. By sending the Sentry back into the past, Uwatu was able to contain the zombie apocalypse to those two universes. This was a closed time loop I spoke of earlier, and as such, there is no patient zero or actual start of the zombie plague, and the entire series is a mind-bending temporal paradox with no beginning or end. I know some of you may be scratching your heads, but this is no different to the time paradox in The Terminator, where John Connor sends Kyle Reese back into the past to save his mother from Skynet, and in trying to kill Connor before his birth, Skynet inadvertently incites the conception of its greatest foe. I've left a lot of the other events and tie-in comics out of this explanation for two reasons. The first being that the video would be way too long if I didn't, and second, because many of the crossovers don't add to the main story, and instead tend to convolute and even contradict the main story arc. But with all that being said, I hope you guys have enjoyed this explanation. Well, that's all for today, folks. A big thanks to all of you guys who requested an exploration of the hunger virus featured in Marvel Comics. Don't forget to hit subscribe and click the notification icon to stay up to date on all my content. And if there's anything else you'd like to request, please don't hesitate to ask. As always, it's been a pleasure. Niat here with Film Comics Explained. Thanks for stopping by. You know, I really wish I had my hammer. A hammer? Quite unique. It was made from this, this special metal from the heart of a dying star. I, I used to spin it really fast and it would, it would pull me off the Oh my god. The hammer pulled you off? The ground. It would pull me off the ground, up into the air and I would fly.